Section 7.3 covers the theoretical approach to analyzing paired data, both hypothesis testing and confidence intervals. Be sure to have your calculator out for this section. We are again in a situation where we can use the central limit theorem to apply a theory-based approach. Under certain validity conditions, the sampling distribution of several sample mean differences will be approximately normal, indicating that it will be bell-shaped and symmetric, centered at the true mean of the differences, and with standard deviation sigma sub d, this population standard deviation of differences, divided by the square root of the sample size. Notice this distribution relies heavily on the true mean of differences and the true standard deviation of differences. We do not hypothesize about sigma sub d, so we are back to using a t distribution to analyze this type of data. If we are to assume that the null hypothesis is true, in other words, that mu d is equal to zero, we can simplify the distribution on the previous slide to saying that the sampling distribution of many mean differences will be approximately normal centered at zero with standard deviation sigma sub d over the square root of n. We know the center of the distribution will be zero, but we don't know what sigma sub d is. So what should we use instead? We'll use s sub d, or the sample standard deviation of the differences, in place of the population standard deviation of the differences. That means we're calculating standard error of the mean of the differences under the null hypothesis. And that standard error formula is s sub d over the square root of n. That means our standardized statistic, which is always our statistic minus the null divided by standard deviation of the statistic, becomes x bar d minus zero divided by that standard error formula just given, or simplified x bar d divided by s sub d over the square root of n. Notice that this formula looks identical to the formula for a single mean. That's because we're analyzing a single set of quantitative values, the differences. So the theoretical approach is very similar between paired data and a single quantitative variable analysis. The assumption in a hypothesis test that mu d equals zero has no impact on our standard error formula, so we use the same formula, or that the standard error of the mean of differences is s sub d over the square root of n. Since we are working with means again, we will refer to the t distribution to obtain our multiplier, and so our confidence interval is our observed statistic x bar d plus or minus the multiplier from that t distribution times the standard error formula written above, s sub d over the square root of n. Again, be sure when interpreting the confidence interval to include the order of subtraction either by explicitly including it in the interpretation or stating that one observation is higher than the other on average. 3.2 and 3.3, the validity condition required for a single quantitative variable is that either the sample data must be symmetric, or we must have a sample size of at least 20, and the sampling distribution must not be heavily skewed. Well, now our data are the differences, so these validity conditions apply to those differences. In other words, the distribution of differences must be symmetric, or we must have at least 20 differences, and the distribution of those differences is not heavily skewed. Work through Exploration 7.3 and view the video for the 7.3 wrap-up for example calculations and interpretations using this theoretical approach.